Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be discussing pull-up resistors on the STM32 Nucleo boards. If you'd like to follow along with this series, then you'd need to get yourself an STM32 board. I'm using the F401RE Nucleo board. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's something that a lot of students and hobbyists use. So give it a Google STM32 F401RE. And I'll be sure to leave some links in the description as well. So let's talk about pull-up resistors. Uh, pull-up resistors are fixed value resistors used between the connection of the voltage supply so vcc and a particular pin in a digital logic circuit so more commonly paired with things like switches its purpose is to ensure that the voltage between the ground and the vcc is actively controlled when the switch is open these nuclear boards they have internal pull-up resistors that are attached to their digital pins these internal resistors keep the logic of the pin at a high state, meaning on or a logic one. Then when we want to activate the pin, for example, by pressing a button, we send that logic one down to ground, creating a logic zero. So when you hear pull up, you might ask, what about pull down resistors? Yep, that's the thing. It does the exact opposite to pull up. So a pull up resistor connects unused input pins to the supply voltage. So pull up, unused pins up to the supply voltage. A pull down resistor connects the unused input pins to ground zero volts to keep the given input low. So pull up goes to VCC, keeps the input high and pull down goes to ground, keeps the input low. So for this example, here's the circuit we'll be using and this is how I'll demonstrate what how a pull up resistor works. So if you want to build it, all you need is a push button, two jumper cables and then obviously the nuclear board as well. So Connect one jumper cable to ground and the other to pin D3, then each one into either end of the push button. Let's take a look at this code. So let me show you this code running first and foremost with and without the pull-up resistor activated. And then once we've done that, I'll talk you through what's happening within the code line by line as well. So first let's run the code without a pull-up resistor. So what happens if we run this code without the pull-up resistor activated? You can see here it goes nuts. We're trying to activate this LED here and it's just blinking on and off regardless to whether I'm pressing it. So let's just take a look at the output on an oscilloscope as well. And as you can see, it's nuts. So now what happens if you run the code with the pull up resistor activated, you'll see now the button will function properly when I'm pressing it. So look at the output on the scope as well. There's no craziness, just solid lines. So if you understand this, you'll see that the pull up resistors are essential. And it's got something to do with the fact that when you don't have the pull-up resistor activated within the code, then you're basically leaving it floating and you've got a whole bunch of EMF electromagnetic uh, fields going on around the nuclear board that are causing the pins to go high, low, high, low, high, low and just fluctuate crazily. So if you want your code to behave exactly how you've written it, then just understand that you're dealing with the real world and in the real world, you need to deal with things like floating pins. So that's why we use pull-up resistors. We want our code to function properly. So let's go through the code itself. You, I suppose you could divide the code into two different parts. You've got the code which is outside the main function and then you've got the code within the main function, right? So the code outside the main function just consists of three lines. We've got embed.h. So firstly, we ask the compiler to include the embed header file. Embed.h is just a header file that declares a set of functions, constants, classes, etc. So just things for us to use. If you're familiar at all with any other forms of coding, then you'd be used to header files. So nothing new there. Secondly, we've got digital out. So probably best to explain what digital out is. First, it's a digital, it's an interface which is used to configure and control a digital output pin. So it can only be used with certain pins on the board and also with the onboard LEDs, which is what we're gonna be using it for. So setting the state of the pin or LED to zero so we've got our digital output pin, setting that state of that pin to zero will turn that pin or the LED off. Setting the state of the pin or the LED to one will turn it on, right? So in our case, we'll be using digital out to control the state of the onboard LED, alternating it from zero to one and back again. So, so here in this portion of the code, we're declaring the onboard LED as a digital out. We'll be sending a logic one or logic zero to that LED to turn it on or off. And on the third line, lastly, we've got digital in. So digital in is used to read the value of a digital input pin. 
the way that digital in works is that any voltage that it sees at that pin below 0 0.8 volts will show up on the program as a logic zero. So anything below 0 0.8 volts and any voltage above two volts will read as a logic one. So obviously anything between 0 0.8 volts and two volts is kind of undefined, right? So digital in uses an internal pull down resistor. That means that it has a logic zero reading when it's not in use. Okay, let's get into the meat of the program. My switch dot mode in brackets pull up. So you can see here, we've got my switch is just the variable that we've created. And then we've, we're setting its mode to pull up. So embed has some special inputs that can be programmed to provide an internal pull up resistor and eliminate the need to add an external resistor when hooking up things like push buttons and switches. So to use it on a digital in pin, which is what we did up here, we set the mode to pull up with the pin dot mode. So the pin, the pin variable name dot mode in brackets pull up and leave out the external resistor. So we don't, need to, we don't need to actually put a resistor on the circuit. Now that we have our button set to pull up mode, this means that it will now have a logic one when it's not in use, right? So the button just sitting there on our breadboard and we're not pressing it, our nuclear board is reading a logic one. Okay, so then here we've got a while one, so we want this program to be constantly running. So we just set a while loop and set it to always be true. And then here we've got an if statement. So the if statement is checking to see if the switch has been pressed. Remember that the switch has, we've, we've used a pull up a resistor on the switch, right? So the switch currently has a logic one when it's not in use. So what we're saying here is that we're checking if the switch is not active high, the switch is not a one. So when we press the switch, it gets sent to ground and it becomes a logic zero. So therefore, if the if condition is fulfilled, we will then execute the code inside the if statement, right? So first thing inside the if statement is we've got my LED is equal to not my LED, which might seem confusing, but we're basically saying here that we want whenever the button is pressed, to make the LED the opposite to what it currently is now. So what we're doing is we're taking whatever value our digital out pin is. So if our digital out pin is set to one, we're gonna inverse it, make it zero. So if we if it's set to one, it means the LED is on. If we press it, we inverse it, we set the digital out to zero, the LED turns off, okay? And the last bit of the code, we've got an embed function, which we get from the header file, which will cause the microcontroller to sleep or AKA pause, right? So the value in this bracket here is in milliseconds. So here we're causing the microcontroller to sleep for 500 milliseconds or equivalent to half a second. So we do this since mechanical buttons have something called debounce, which could cause one button press to be counted as multiple button presses. So we don't want that to happen, right? So what we do is we include a small wait time to avoid this issue and that's it. So. That's the end of the program and that's the end of this video. Hopefully you now know a lot more than you did previously about pull up and pull down resistors. Uh, you need to be comfortable using them. They are super important. Practice makes perfect, obviously. If this video kind of went over your head, watch it again and uh, practice with the code. You know, try it. Try run your code with a push button without using pull up or pull down resistors. You're gonna come into a fair bit of trouble. So yeah, give it a go. Practice wins perfect. And uh, subscribe if you're new. And I sh shall see you guys in the next one. Take care.